Hey everybody, welcome back to the Joe Blow Movie Show Podcast. I'm Paul Shirey, Editor-in-Chief of JoeBlow.com. Joined with... That was... That was last week's thing. <laughs> that was uh, Chris Bumbre, a.k.a. Special Gremlin Master Gremlin Mel Gibson. <laughs> and of course, Sean Wist. The ghost, the ghost of Mel Gibson. Yeah. Hello, I'm the one here just laughing and not offering <laughs> up any insight into movies or whatsoever. This, <laughs> Sean is like the DJ in the background. He's just like kind of watching over everything and then he just, he jumps in. He's like he's a got little like ninja. The w- I jump in with like, a, like that a kind ninja. of Seth Rogen-esque laugh. <laughs> he's he's, he's yeah. got like the Sean is, you are he's, kind of our laugh track and also. He's got like, the, he's holding the earphones and he's just got like the one earbud in, you know, and he's kind of nodding and he's yeah. listening and he's holding it. He's got it like sunglasses. This is what I imagine. Yeah. And he's got sunglasses on. There's a disco ball at so- somewhere. And a backwards trucker cap with a with a yeah. marijuana leaf. And he's on just it. moving his head like there's actual music playing, but it's really just the yeah. smooth, sultry sounds of mine and Chris's voices. That's all I need. All right. I'm in a super good mood today, guys. By the way, Chris, did you take some uppers for this podcast? Because last week, if you all remember, Chris was grumpy as fuck. Even better. Guess what just dropped yesterday? A new episode of. The Brett Easton Ellis podcast. <laughs> oh man, it's been so long. <laughs> Cut. I'm glad you finally remembered. I actually I'm made excited. myself a Moscow Mule for this uh, podcast. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how things go. How political of you? How what? Political? How political oh. of you? Yeah, I guess. <sighs> All right. So should uh, well, I don't want Paul's getting drunk. Maybe I'll take over the show today. Hey, so today it's <laughs> hey. the Don Johnson. Hey, power hey hour. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna talk about Don Johnson, eh? Don Johnson, Don Johnson. Uh, no, actually, we're gonna talk about Matthew Vaughn. Oh, Matthew Vaughn. Ooh, who? What a superman he is. What a su- <laughs> <laughs> what a man of steel. Truly. So it was reported uh, this week uh, by Collider, I believe was the uh, exclusive folks that put it out there, that Matthew Vaughn, director of X-Men First Class, Kingsman, uh, Stardust. And Layer is, Cake. And Layer Cake. Which is, his, which is his best movie, I think. I disagree. But anyways, but. is being sought by Warner Brothers to take on the Man of Steel sequel. Which is a significantly different type of style uh, than what we had with Zack Snyder in the uh, original film. But it uh, shows two things. One, that obviously they're looking to change that tone from the first Man of Steel, which I actually love. I have no complaints about Man of Steel. Um, mm, and then, I like it quite a bit, but I have some complaints about it. I love it, personally. Um, but I do like it, though. I like it a lot more than most than most people do. Uh, the other thing that it uh, definitely shows is that they are obviously looking to make a sequel to the man of steel, another Superman film. Now, well, why I, wouldn't they though? I mean, well, really, I mean, man of steel was, was a, a hit. It wasn't a huge hit. Uh, and then Batman vs Superman obviously was also a hit. I mean, they probably want, they wanted like, you know, a couple extra bucks to go in there, but some better critical reception, but either way, it still was a, a, a very good hit, but, um, it's, I think they are really looking towards a shift. Um, in tone and style and everything. And, um, I think it's an interesting direction. I think, I think Vaughn is actually a great choice. I think if you, if you look at first class, first class has a lot of energy. It has a lot of style, but it does not, it's not, not dark. It still has some very dark twisted moments in it as well. So in the end, I think that Vaughn could easily carry or transition that man of steel kind of tone that was set. And then just, you know, easily slide his style in there as well but still it's retain good, some of it it's a good time for them to do it though if you think about it though because and obviously justice league he's going to be resurrected right so potentially what is, is a, <laughs> fuck off hey but, everyone this is sean wist here with the joe blow movie podcast <laughs> he's just bad we're gonna keep on going are you spinning <laughs> records while you're talking i just see you spinning records i don't spinning know gold. Hey, wait, hey, wait. Wait, 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 wait. um <laughs> but you know the thing is Let's say he gets resurrected in Justice League. Could happen. Man of Steel <laughs> Part Two could theoretically just pick up right after that, and then 
if people have been so upset about the Superman movies being dark, it could be an interesting way to do a soft reboot of that series because now he's been resurrected and he's different, kind of. I don't see, but I don't know. What's with the soft reboot shit? Why would it be a soft reboot? I think well, a reboot. not like a reboot. Come on. But like a soft reboot. They're it's going to be Henry Cavill, Cavill. obviously. As well, far as that's like not a, total a reboot. Shift, I guess in the yeah, DC universe, shift. a total shift. Sure, that's why not I said a, reboot. a soft reboot. That's not, not a, a soft reboot. reboot. Soft reboot. You fucking, I'm gonna punch you in the face if I could. <laughs> if I was in Montreal, you already did with your words. <laughs> uh, anyways, I think Vaughn is an inspired choice. I think he would be. I think. I mean, I remember watching First Class and thinking, Jesus, I wish the other X Men films had this much energy and style, and still was like really cool. Like it had genuinely cool moments and. You know, you can't say that it was all light, goofy fare. I mean, Magneto fucking pushes a quarter through a dude's head and kills him. Or not a quarter, but whatever the fuck that coin was. So, I mean, that's some dark shit. So, there's no reason that Vaughn couldn't carry that. And, I mean, even Kingsman. In a, in, a, in a darkened movie theater by yourself saying, hey, this is some dark shit. This is some dark shit. <laughs> I didn't. I, yeah, I, I don't talk. Been much lighter. I don't yeah. talk during the movie. Hey, I really this is some dark shit. Do my best. <laughs> like nudging the guy next to him. This is some fucking this dark, some shit. dark this shit. I mean, dark look shit, at this. Hey. See that? That was a quarter. Believe Whoa. me, I've sat through hey, many guy. a movie with chatty people and it's obnoxious as fuck. I remember mm-hmm. seeing, what did we saw? Uh, Hangover 2 when it was revealed that the, the chick that Ed Helms had sex with was not a chick but a dude. And I sit next to this guy and he goes, he starts yelling out, It's a shem! It's a damn shim! And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I remember I saw Ant-Man with you and you just kept rubbing my shoulders the whole time. It was very strange. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's, that's normal. And patting my head, my bald head, just so rubbing shiny. my hand on it. It was very strange. If, it's like but a... But sh- not, awful, not, not awful, though. <laughs> it's like a shaved peach. Yeah. It's yeah, amazing. that's what it was kind of like. Yeah. <laughs> my balls are the same way. All right. <laughs> I did not touch those. Did not need to know that much. <laughs> oh, well, that's that's what you think. I mean, you know, <laughs> what happened in Montreal stays in Montreal, as Sean is soon to find out when you guys go to Las Vegas together. Well, but Woo. Las Vegas is not Montreal. Oh, so it's going to be even wilder then. No, uh, I don't know, man. Montreal is pretty crazy. But in anyway, Monty. Man of Steel 2, getting back to that. I mean, I think, it's, I think it's a pretty cool idea. I mean, Matthew Vaughn seems to me like a pretty decent choice. I mean, I, heck, you know what? I would have been fine with matthew vaughn directing the batman maybe even more excited about him directing the batman than it would have been with matt reeves mm, i don't know i think i'd be less excited for vaughn on batman really? i think he could do it don't get me wrong he, he could do it but i do feel like his he has a more energetic like lively style and i mm-hmm. think for batman you need that obviously you need the darkness i mean it's batman for god's sake and reeves mm-hmm. has kind of got that glum dark style that you can see in the the apes film mm-hmm. films some pretty dark shit, huh, Paul? Some pretty dark shit. Some pretty dark shit. <laughs> Some pretty dark shit. What do you think, Sean? Um, I like Vaughn okay. Like, there's elements of his movies I really like. I can't say that I've really seen any of them a second time. I haven't seen all of them. I haven't seen Lair Cake. Um, Have you seen Stardust? Like, yeah, yeah, that was a fun one. I love Stardust. Um, but I, I saw. I like Stardust time. too. Like, if I was really gonna rewatch one, that would be it. Um. I think I've seen Kick Ass a couple times, but um, oh, yeah, that's we'll right, see. he did Kick like, Ass. I always forget he did Kick Ass. That's right. I'm sorry. Please continue. No, that was it. <laughs> that was really it. Like, uh, right, uh, like first class, I thought was okay. I didn't care for like the third act, which was like typical superhero stuff. And then I actually didn't like Kingsman. I'm like one of two what? people who didn't like that movie. You like the yeah. only one. Yeah, I love Kingsman. Yeah, it's, I was a little bored by it, and I thought, like, this is a really silly complaint for me because I'm going to sound like an a, elitist snob, but I thought it was kind of just an immature movie. Like It, it was. Like, I think I would have loved it if I saw it in high school, but, like, now I was like, uh, oh, enough. I get it. He get he gets anal at the end. Great. You know? I don't, yeah, I don't think I you're – I have to say that, that joke I thought did kind of stick out a little bit. Yeah. That was a, that was a little too, you know well, – I mean, whatever. I'm not going to get PC or anything, but it was just kind of – It was kind of silly. Was it – well, it wasn't really needed, you know. It was yeah. like a little capper that, you know, in 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 the olden days, you know, was, they were trying to make it like a Roger Moore Bond movie, and they could have just ended it with him giving like a raised eyebrow and like a silly double entendre, and it would have worked a lot yeah. better, I think. Well, I mean, and that was yeah, kind I, of their. Intent, I think I'd rather but... just watch like a classic Moore yeah. flick than Kingsman again, you know. So. 
I like. But no, we'll, I like we'll see what he does. Seven. What though. are you doing? He's keeping our Bre- the British end up, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas came twice. Doctor Goodhead. <laughs> Doc- My name is Doctor oh, Goodhead. Yeah. All right, so, well, it's not confirmed that Vaughn <laughs> is uh, directing Man of Steel 2, but I think it's an interesting name out there, and uh, we'll see what happens. But, I, I mean, think, I feel uh, like he might, you know, I, th- I feel like a lot of studios are going to come calling for him, though. Yeah, well, why not? I mean, he's a proven guy that can handle he can handle the pressure of making these films. Not everybody can make these films, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, everybody's always complaining, like, why don't they just let everybody fucking make these fucking movies and get every indie filmmaker and every give them a chance? It's let like, me make these movies. Yeah, it's like, dude, man, that's a lot of fucking pressure. You're not, this isn't like, hey, here's $5,000 and you have four weeks to go shoot your movie and we don't give a fuck, just turn it in in four weeks. This is like, you know, six months of your life or longer and you're catering to like some serious crazy fucking fans. And I don't mean crazy in a yeah, negative sense no per doubt. se. A little bit negative. Yeah. But I mean, you're you're mm-hmm. catering to a mass audience with these films. You have to find somebody that can really balance that. This is not... Making these films is not an easy task. I mean, it's just, it just isn't. So Vaughn has proven to be able to handle that pressure. So why wouldn't they? Well, let's, let's move from steel to iron. A throne of iron. Ooh. You could have said ice and fire. That would have been better. It just proves well, you don't know shit about Game of Thrones. I'm on like season four. Sean, do you watch Game of Thrones? Uh, I've seen all the recent stuff, but as I mentioned before, uh, I didn't like the last two seasons, so I, I don't really care. Okay, well I love them, anymore. Uh, and I'm a huge fan of the books. And it was announced that uh, well, first they got the they announced the premiere date of the seventh season, which will be on July 16th, which they basically announced last year. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's really not huge news; just a, a more solid date uh so july 16th uh season seven will kick off with seven episodes uh and then they announced that the final season will be just six episodes Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of people that are kind of freaking out about that a bit um Uh, but you know what i mean they obviously have a path that they want to follow i'm sure that they could have made as many episodes as they wanted i'm sure it wasn't just hbo going no sorry you only have six episodes last season i'm sure that's exactly the amount that they feel they need in order to finish the story so fair enough yeah i don't see well and david banyoff uh and dan weiss they talked about it and they they basically gave a very good explanation which is uh that in essence they are basically making a 70 hour movie um Mm -hmm. and their quote is it's only going to be six episodes six episodes for the final season from the beginning we've wanted to tell a 70 hour movie it will turn out to be a 73 hour movie but it stayed relatively the same of having the beginning middle and now we're coming to the end it would have been really tough if we lost any core cast members along the way i'm very happy we've kept everyone and we get to finish it the way we want to so i think there's something to be said for staying on target not overstaying your welcome and just stay you know, on target. Stay on target. You know, finishing sure what HBO you started. Wanted them to stay. I'm sure HBO wanted them to stay. Oh, it's the I'm sure show they've got going. But it also has and gotten more and more expensive spin-offs. per season too. So I mean, that's sure. also another consideration. And they're talking more and more about spinoffs as well. So you know, yeah, so I'm sure that yeah. the day will come that that'll happen. I mean, you, there's so many stories you can tell, especially in prequel form. I mean, you could do and everybody likes too. stories. People and do, prequels. People do like their stories. So, yeah, I mean, there's uh, certainly potential they could do that. I think it would be interesting to see uh, a prequel series. I'd watch it. A Ned Stark I'd series. Give it a the shot. Adventures in Ned Stark. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of people, the, the big complaint, you know, is like, oh, my God, they kill off Ned Stark in season one. What the fuck? But it's like the guy has like a huge fucking, you know, backstory uh, and shit. that say he has a huge head. <laughs> it's pretty big. Lopped off. Inside. Bring me his head. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, anyways, uh, I'm not uh, all that broken up about it. Um, I'm happy that they're actually going to, you know, end the series the way that they wanted to and the way that they planned to rather than dragging it out. Because, honestly, there's nothing worse than, like, when a show starts to feel like you're getting to some closure, to some finality, and then they're like, oh, and we're renewed for another season. You're like, God damn it. Yeah. You know? It's like that just is wrap it up. True. And coming coming from someone like I love the first four seasons, um, who doesn't like the last two seasons? This actually excites me a little bit more because I mean, at, at this point, it is somewhat fan fiction, if you will. You know, they got a blueprint from the author, but they're 
they're kind of writing as they yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this if they keep it concise, not only do they have, you know, okay, here's the budget we have to work with and everything, but there's also less downtime. So it isn't that the way I felt the last couple of seasons have been, where it's like, okay, we have to introduce a new season and what's going on, and then it kind of dips down a little bit, and then we have to build it back up for the finale. This yeah. way it's like, no, it's all... It's all compelling. It's all action all the time. Not action, so to speak, but yeah, yeah. Just well, I mean, yeah, no, just keeping I, things I moving. Get I get it. Yeah, I agree. No, but it's I, good. It's also good, you know, when they have time to plan out an ending. Like one of my favorite shows that I don't find is watched enough is uh, The Americans, and The Americans just came back, and um, they're doing this season and then next season, and that's it. They have they've already been greenlit for both seasons, but they're shooting them kind of together, and they're working towards a very definitive ending. And I like it when they do that. It's the same thing that Breaking Bad did. You know, and Breaking Bad suddenly had a huge spike in popularity just before they went into the last season. And I'm sure that yeah. AMC, if they could have, would have said, oh, you know what? Maybe go on a couple more seasons. But no, instead, they decided to end the show when they ended the show. And it was perfect. Yeah, I jumped on a Breaking yeah. Bad right when they were starting the last season. It was yeah, perfect. A lot of it was perfect. I binged. Jumped on. I binged all the way to the to the like whatever it was sixth season or whatever mm-hmm. it was, and then the the final season was on the air. Like I literally finished the last episode and it was like I had to wait two weeks, and that was it. And then I had the first episode. So the worst from there was just waiting week to week. But, it was like that for a lot of people though, because that was around the time that it hit Netflix. So that was when people really got on board with that show. And, you know, they would have yeah, kept it going, I'm sure, if they could have. Yeah, but, you know, luckily they didn't. And it's good, you know, sometimes as much as we want these shows to continue, when they continue on and on and on, they lose something. I mean, I'm trying to think of, you know, Lost, for me, was a show that that oh, happened to. Yeah. Just went off the rails, you know, it just was too much of a good thing, you know, and then it ended up becoming tarnished i never i still haven't finished lost to this day oh really you know? see i so. finished it and, and i love Lost. i actually i absolutely mm-hmm. love it but i do agree and i think lost is one of those like lesson learned shows even though i yeah. i i'm happy with the way it ended i'm happy with the overall show but with caveats i think had they gone in with a blueprint of this is exactly yeah. how many seasons we're doing the story's going from here to here now let's work instead they were it felt like they were like hmm what if you know, right in the middle of a season, you're like, this isn't really working, man. You know what I'm saying? They were changing it up without really a roadmap. And you could say, well, that's how many stories are told. You know, people, a writer just sits down and starts writing, which is true. Um, But they also have revisions. They have edits. They go back and they think, oh, this is really not working. Let's try this. And it really felt like a lot of on the fly shit with Lost. And I know it wasn't your favorite show, but I'm thinking right now of, um, because a lot of people were talking about it because it's the 20th, 20th anniversary, but Buffy the Vampire Slayer was like that a bit for me. Oh, I really like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but I think that when it went off the WB in season five, I really feel like it should have ended there because it had a really good finale, but then they brought it back for another two years. And at that point it was like, eh, you know, I mean, it was still good. They still had some of the best episodes did happen in the last two years, but you know, it had a really kind of anticlimactic end. You know, and it's just, it's one of those things that, you know, sometimes shorter is, you know, leaner. I could, I could not get into Buffy. I understand there's tons and tons of fans. I respect that. I just like, and I, it's not that I never tried. I did my roommate uh, at the time when it was at the kind of the height of its popularity was hugely into it. And he was like, man, come on, dude, you gotta, you gotta start watching this together. And I was like, all right, cool. I'll give it a shot. And I started, I was like, man, this fucking, this is fucking so stupid. The dialogue, <laughs> the Joss Whedon dialogue just was not fucking working for me at all. I was like, dude, I just, I can't, this is just not, it's dumb. And I remember, and uh, my girlfriend, uh, at the time too, she was super into it. I remember her and her friend crying at the, uh, Angel episode, I guess, where she kills Angel or whatever. They're like bawling, man. I was just looking at them and I was like, what the fuck? I've never seen that before or after. I've never seen people just bawl their eyes out over a show. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm trying to think of another show that went on way too long. Fuck, it's still ongoing is The X Files. Yeah, it doesn't seem like the revival has worked out so well for that one. Yeah, well, they're bringing it back, I think, for another season, though, so... But I still love those guys, so I'll let them make their show. I like those guys, too, but it's just, you know... I remember the last couple seasons of that show were fucking bad, though, after David Duchovny left. Well, then he came back, though. Didn't He came back at the end. Well, for, like, one episode. I don't remember. Yeah. So that's the T-1000 you're talking about that took his place, though. Yeah, but it's still... Let's show some fucking respect, Bumbray. Sucked. Yeah, whatever. All right. Anyways, we... Uh, so that's Game of Thrones. I'm excited for it, and... I'm just glad that it's 
coming to a, a good finale. So uh, this week, this past week, we also got three new trailers, which uh, I thought were all cool, some more than too. others. Uh, we got a new trailer for Wonder Woman. Uh, mm-hmm. The first trailer for Edgar Wright's Baby Driver. We actually got two different versions of that. Mm-hmm. And the first trailer for David Leitch's uh, Atomic Blonde starring Charlize Theron, all of which I thought were uh, really good trailers. But I was most impressed uh, with Baby Driver and Atomic Blonde. Well, which, Baby um, Driver and Atomic Blonde also both showed at South by Southwest at this South weekend, South too. At South by Southwest, yes. Which I've got um, to go to next year. I mean, I was uh, what a great lineup this year, Buck. You know what? We talked about it, and it was before we talked about possibly going this year, yeah. and there were no announcements. We had no idea what was coming. At the yeah. t- so you have to plan these things in advance. And last know, year, it was know, like there was like two movies. Yeah, last year, and then this year, wasn't good at all. But this year, yeah, was it wasn't. But then it was like, what the fuck? You have Baby Driver and Atomic Blonde. God damn it! Yeah. So you know, it's just one of those things. But you have to make a call. Like as a business, you got to say, well, is, it, yeah. is the juice going to be worth the squeeze? And you just don't yeah, you know. You really so, never know. Eh? You really never know. Yeah. So, oh well. Well, they're uh, coming we had, out anyway. We'll see them eventually. Yeah, I mean, we'll still still see them and give reviews. Anyways, I thought the uh, the Wonder Woman trailer was really cool. It it was almost like a perfect bookend trailer to the Edit Bay visit because it basically covers all that stuff, like basically the first third of the movie. And, you know, it looks like just a little bit more sprinkled well, I, throughout. I feel like we've seen enough of it at this point, though. Like, just now let's just see the movie. I feel like we've seen enough, but I feel like we haven't seen anything at all, to be well, quite honest. Well, which is good, I feel though, like they're really, really holding back quite a bit. Good. Which is, again, yeah, I agree with you, is, is great. It's like, you, know, you see too often, you're like, oh, Jesus, they're, so they're going to show everything. You know? I remember when uh, they were going to show the, the Captain America Civil War trailer last year, and everybody was like, oh, man, do you think they're going to show Spider-Man? And I was like, of course they're going to show Spider-Man. That's asses in seats. Why the fuck wouldn't they show Spider-Man? And sure enough, they. Did. I remember there was like I was kind of going back and forth to some people on Twitter. They're like, "That would just be ridiculous. Like, why would they spoil it?" And I'm like, "Because um, they like money, yeah. <laughs> you know. Like, not everybody is a nerd like sitting on a website like us. Like, there's you know just average people, you know, that go to the movies and don't take it as seriously. But like, seeing Spider Man in a trailer would be enough. They'd be like, oh shit, Spider Man. Okay, I'll go. You got him in that movie too. Fuck yeah, I'm in." fucking dark uh i was pretty hyped though to the uh <laughs> to the baby driver and atomic blonde trailers although atomic blonde seems like it's getting good reviews but not great reviews although baby driver is getting raves yeah i mean but edgar wright i just well think somebody, somebody, somebody had said Southwest, is edgar it's wright all, like, the fanboys that are going to so it's you'll know they're not i don't know if they're 100 percent I don't think I, I, I somebody had said that, that Edgar Wright's incapable of making a bad film. I'm sure if he tried oh, really hard, that. he could. But the bottom line is like he's just somebody he's a filmmaker that you can kind of go to. Like for me, I, I know some people don't like a style, but like Wes Anderson, I'll I'll love whatever he makes. And there's some of his mm-hmm. movies I like better than others. But there's certain directors that bring a style and sensibility and tone that, you know, immediately you're going to latch on to. And I think Edgar well, Wright is one of those filmmakers. Well, Edgar Wright's a guy that I, mean, I could say this when I see a trailer for something like Baby Driver, even if it didn't say a film by Edgar Wright, I could probably look at it and say, "Oh, yeah, that looks like an Edgar Wright movie." Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Same it thing does. with Wes Anderson. You know, you could watch a Wes Anderson trailer without, you know, without his. Yeah, name they could being never say it. his name. Like, yeah, like, this is a definitely a Wes Anderson movie. That's got it. You know, be and it. it's yeah. and it's kind of same thing with Tarantino. You know, it's oh, this is Tarantino. So he's one of those guys that it's kind of he has an immediately identifiable style scorsese yeah. too you know that's what the great directors have you know and dude that is run. that's that is what got me into film to begin with was noticing mm-hmm. style i remember i used to watch mm-hmm. I spielberg think I too. spielberg's this. got a specific style as well so kind of but i remember i used to watch uh this was before <laughs> to show my age when i was a kid though uh I, I would stay up late and i would there's uh tony scott's revenge would be on late on oh, hbo yeah, i, love, I, love, I that love that movie, movie. It's so yeah, fucking good me too and I remember I just loved the style of it. Did you ever do a best movie you never saw on Revenge? It was, no, I never got to it. It was on my list. Oh, and I was I like, man, one. this movie is so great. Like, I just love the look of it. And yeah. it felt very familiar and I couldn't figure it out. And I remember like months and months later, Top Gun was on. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, this looks exactly like Revenge. Like the style, the composition of the shots, like every scene being kind of like steamed out. Like... And I, I didn't have, there was no such thing as the fucking internet then. So I went to the bookstore and I bought this book 
this reference guide that had every movie and it had a cast and director all cross referenced. Yeah. Back in those days, that's how we found out information. Letter Martin's and, movie guide. I used to have it by my bed. Yeah, that's it. And so I start. I looked it up his name, and then I was like, "Holy shit! I love this guy." You know, that's when I found. Out, oh, he directed the Last Boy Scout and all these other films, and that is what, like was the catalyst for me that really got me into film and really just paying attention to just everything. Quick aside, what did you think of the director's cut of Revenge? I like the theatrical cut better. I do too. The music is better. I don't like the, I like the music and the songs that are in the theatrical yeah, cut, and I think it's too. it's a more concise film. Uh, same thing with like uh, with Mel Gibson's Payback. I think the theatrical cut is better. The theatrical cut is way better in that case. It's like yeah, it's got a much more satisfying ending, and even though you've got just like a totally different action scene in it, the mm-hmm. theatrical cut is way more satisfying, mm-hmm. like yeah, in a there. big way. But. Okay. Um, Getting back, though, to, to Edgar Wright, you know, I mean, I was thinking, you know, when I first heard about Baby Driver, I was kind of thinking, you know, it's, oh, it's the same thing kind of from Edgar Wright. It looks looked like another Scott Pilgrim, and, and it is, in a way, kind of a more grounded, I guess, version of it, you know, crime instead of comic book. Um, and I was kind of down at that, thinking that, you know, it, it would be nice if, if Edgar Wright was to do something maybe a little bit different. But then again, you know, I'm thinking, why should he, though? I mean, he does what he does so well. Right. And nobody exactly. else can do what he does as well as he does it. So. Yeah, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see an Edgar Wright romantic comedy or. He's not a journeyman Edgar director. Wright. He's yeah, not a you know, journeyman. he's like. He does a specific thing and he does it extremely well. And that's, yeah. I think that's also and a that's mark of a great director. For. Yeah. Uh, and then moving on to Atomic Blonde, I, I have to say my expectations were fairly low, even though I've, you know, I really, obviously I've championed David Leitch uh, in the past. I think he's a good director, but um, I, I mean, the only thing to really base it off of was John Wick, but I thought Atomic Blonde looks like basically Joan Wick mm-hmm. um, with Charlize Theron. At an 80s uh, setting, which is kind of cool. But it looks great, and it looks very. It it does look like a female version of of John Wick, and I so I don't say that in a negative way. It just looks very hardcore, uh, and they, very fun. They put out that they put out that fight clip as well too, where she's fighting the guy in the stairwell. That looks pretty cool. I thought. Well, that's and part of the trailer. It's all a sing, and apparently it's all. Well, apparently it's all a single take. It's a long action yeah. scene. Yeah, and, it's, um, it's the beginning of the trailer where she steps out of the it, elevator. Yeah, and it only cost apparently twenty million dollars to make. So if he could do something like that on that level for 20 million. I mean, imagine what he's going to be able to bring to Deadpool too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think if anything, it makes me even more excited for his involvement mm-hmm. in that. Just seeing what he can bring. Mm-hmm. Sean, what did you think? What's, what's your take on these? Um, as you said, wonder woman, it's like, all right, we've kind of seen it all. It was a nice, like, let's round out just the, the first third of the movie thing. So it's like, I didn't need to see any more. I, I want to see that movie. Um, baby driver for me, that's, I think it's the, mo- the least interesting premise for an Edgar Wright movie I've seen so far. I, yeah, I agree. I'll, I'll see it because, you know, he's a very stylistic director. It's the he style, shoots though. very well. And it's the yeah. fact yeah. that they're mixing in the music so much, too. Like, apparently it's almost but a musical. But even that, like, the excuse is like, oh, you know, he has this hearing condition and, like, he listens to music to block it out. And, like, that's kind of the the quote-unquote excuse. The to, excuse like, to use the soundtrack. Music. Yeah, I get it. It's actually, it's like you don't need to do it. Like, they're movies. they Give him a great soundtrack. You don't need to like come up with a reason, but that's fine. Yeah, it's just, um, it's a, it's I agree the, with you. The, I, I don't. The, it's the MacGuffin. I think that's a legitimate thing, but but again, I think it goes back to I think it goes back to right style. But I do agree, it does see, feel kind of like an excuse. It's like a kind of a weird like I I don't know like transporter or drive, but just Edgar Wright style. Yeah, yeah which like, is right. kind of neat yeah. though. I mean. Yeah, but it is. It is, but I mean, it's, so, and, yet, and yet I'm I, still totally excited excited for it. Yeah, I could go either way. I'm I'm kind of more excited to see what like I, I've been wanting to see John Hamm and more like actual good movies. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I would like to see John Hamm and more stuff. Yeah, because he's he's a cool guy, man. Uh, he's really funny too. So I I think Edgar Wright will. Really you just want to see him in more pornography. I mean that too. Um, John, if you're listening, John Hamm is Johnny. Walker. What do you mean if he's listening? Of course he's listening. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> everyone we mention is listening. I think Jesus Christ, that. Charlize, how are you? Uh, and like what you said about Atomic Blonde, you know that looks fine. Ben, um, I'll call the you later. Extended fight sequence at the beginning, I wasn't like blown away by it because it feels like that's just kind of one of the things that people do now in action movies. It's like let's do an extended fight sequence. But like, David right, Leach, cool. David Leach is one of the the guys that that 
kind of founded that. So that's why I give him more street cred for doing it. That's right. But just what I see, saw in the trailer of that fight sequence, I wasn't blown away. Like, you know, it's just like, all right, it looks okay. Stuff like that. And of course, you know, there's chicks making out. So I'm like, all right, well, I got to see this movie at some point. <laughs> um, you know, that was, yeah, I thought that was a cool, I thought that was a cool angle. Boys. I thought that was a cool angle because I mean, I, mean, I guess you to get could get the fanboys in there. I guess you could throw <laughs> it on one on one front. It's kind of like going against the typical, you know, guy and girl sex scene that we've seen a thousand times. But you know, I just I thought it was interesting. I didn't see that. I didn't see it coming at all. I was like, oh, it's all right, Sophie Butella. Yeah, that's why I'm actually more interested to see. Uh, her relationship with James McAvoy's character. Well, he looks yeah, like he he's looks giving awesome. another really cool kind of, yeah, you know, exactly, exactly. Like the little bit we saw that where he's like, you know, do you need help with your bags? And he just pops open the trunk and lets it fall out. You know, it's like, all right, that's, <laughs> that kind of sold me out. But I yeah, like looks, that he's doing that kind of acting now, though. That's more in line with Split as opposed to you know when he plays totally. Charles Xavier when he's giving these kind of really straight laced performances. I like him doing kind of chewing the scenery a bit. I think he's really great when he does that. Yeah, I, I like. It. I really like him in Wanted too. I think his you know roles like that. He's like, oh yeah, he's Wanted got a great a like yeah, crazy he scenery in that. That's I like him in that. Yeah, he's fun. He's like Anyways. a badass Michael J. Fox. Although Michael J. Fox is actually pretty badass. <laughs> he's a badass Michael J. Fox. <laughs> what the fuck is that compared? <laughs> although Michael J. Fox is kind of badass in The Frighteners, though. I don't know. I mean, I like Michael J. Fox. How does actually, James Bagavoy and gonna... Michael J. Fox compare? I was all. actually going to ask you, well, they're both little, <laughs> but I was going to ask you if I could do a, a good, bad, and a badass of Michael J. Fox, actually. I love Michael J. Fox, the Canadian boy. <laughs> I've never heard, is... refer, heard anyone refer to him as badass, though. That's Marty Michael J. Is Fox. Badass. Are you kidding? You're Marty is super badass. badass. I mean, yeah. Marty is a badass. I'll give you that. But what other roles? I don't roles? know about badass. Like, he's kind of the everyman. And he's cool. He didn't even know those boards don't work on water. What a and bojo. You know what? He doesn't Jesus. give a fuck, though. Stupid he still Marty. makes it work, right? Well, I will say it, but Marty is, you know, in that in the Back to the Future films, he does have, like, a kind of a temper and edge. And he is a courageous fellow. You know, I'll give you that. <laughs> a courageous fellow. I wouldn't go, See, as, far that, as, that I wouldn't go as far as to say badass. That's for sure. Well, maybe I'll change the name then for the call for this week to the good, good bad, and bad, nice and boy. The courageous. The good, the, the good, bad, the, bad, the, the courageous, courageous nice fellow. <laughs> the courageous fellow. <laughs> courageous fellows. That's a good. That's a good idea for a new column. Courageous fellows. Speaking <laughs> of uh, courageous fellows, we got some new images from Thor Ragnarok this past week. They cut Thor's hair. Shazam. Well, I uh, reported that about a year, year and a half ago, or something. Originally, so that's what you get for not believing me. Anyways. Um, and made some comparisons to uh, that the film is basically uh, like big inspired by Big Trouble in Little China. So, which is awesome, uh, according to um, Taika Waititi. And uh, you know so what? Basically, I'm the think... Big Trouble in Little China is one of those films where Jack Burton is a buffoon, but he's lovable, and you're with him in the entire way. I thought Thor was got to be the one you want to be with in every scene. Um, I think I I. I I'm so excited for Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. I really I'm feel like... I'm starting to think it may end up being the best Marvel movie since Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, I believe Maybe I said better. it before when we... I said in a couple podcasts back that I think that's going to be the best of the Marvel films coming out this year. Um, mm -hmm. But I just think it's going to be so much fun. I think Titan Baby is Groot's just, not going to be happy to hear you say that. Uh, I think, listen, I think Guardians 2 is going to be, it's going to be fun. It's going to be good. I think probably everybody's going to love it. I think probably people are going to overly love it. Um, but I really feel like Thor Ragnarok is going to be the standout. I think it's going to be exceptionally funny, more funny than people think. And anybody that's like, I don't want funny Thor. It's like, eh, just give it a minute. Cause Chris yeah. Hemsworth is a funny motherfucker. He's yeah. one of those guys where you think, oh, he's just a meathead, but he's actually, it's like, it was like kind of like Channing Tatum where you're like, oh, he's just like some brute, you know, playing in a GI Joe movie. And then all of a sudden he does 21 jump street. You're like, holy shit, this dude's legit hilarious. And I, I think, think that Hemsworth is better at that. comedy than he is at drama, frankly. Oh, yeah, I agree. And I think that Best he's... performance he ever gave was in Ghostbusters. I don't know. I, I like his Thor. I think his Thor is good. And his Thor has always had that kind of comedic edge with that kind of yeah. fish out of water thing. And I think that uh, Taika is just really embracing it. And I think he's giving it a style and a look and everything. Just even, you know, based on the set images and, and tying in Hulk with Planet Hulk and all that other shit. Uh, I just think this is going to be a really... I have very I high hopes. I think, I think Taika will will absolutely nail what he's trying to do with Thor. Because frankly, I never gave a shit about Thor. Yeah, me too. Um, 
because it's see whatever he's there i didn't care about his movies or his character that much but that what he did in that little thor like civil war thing what he was doing was hilarious was so brilliant and he, obviously he's not making a comedy but like if he can capture that angle that part of thor you know then i then i totally want to see that like i i do want to see more of that guy absolutely you know, yeah maybe not relatable but like he's fascinating to watch and fun and he happens to kick a lot of ass too. And it's yeah. and that's is totally. I mean, I don't know if you guys, if you, I think Chris, I know you've seen it. I don't know if you've seen it, Sean. But what we do in the shadows, or yeah. uh, or, oh, yeah. or hunt for yeah. the wilder people. I mean, these are movies hunt for the that wilder just people have is great. Yeah, yeah, they have all of. They have. It's just. It's he like Edgar Wright and uh, the other directors we we're talking about before. You know, Taika has kind of his own sensibility and style, yeah. and I think that he's just a smart. Uh, choice. I have to give uh, kudos to Marvel for even you know hiring him and having the insight to hire him because I I, I don't see how he would be the first name to pop up when you think hey we need a, we got a new director for this new Thor Ragnarok you know you look at the filmmakers they had before you know this Taika is very out of the box. It's going to be uh, a really energetic he's... film though. That's the thing. I think it's going to be you know it's going to be a, a lot shorter than your typical Marvel movie, which is a good thing too. You know, and it's going to be kind of fast and fun and colorful and i think people are probably going to really like it i i agree i really do so i don't know the images look great um it's very co- like you said just very colorful very mm-hmm. vibrant and the characters look cool and we haven't even seen hulk yet so i mean there's yeah. plenty of surprises left and i wouldn't be I think surprised Hulk's if- gonna be green big green guy <laughs> that's a good bet um, big angry green guy but i'm very excited for it i'm looking forward to it mm-hmm. um so yeah thor ragnarok gonna be good shit speaking um, of fun guys john fun c Riley, john kong c Riley in kong skull island crazy captain he's a captain right he's a pilot uh, i don't know if he's pilot, a captain yeah, whatever he has a hat so i mean <laughs> he has a hat and a jacket now sean has not seen the film but he did go on the set visit so he probably knows more than than uh, anybody in terms of how that all shook out uh and about the characters and whatnot but uh, John C. Riley essentially steals the show in Kong Skull Island, oh, which is no small which feat. Which I really, love really to hear because the everyone show. complained about him in the trailer. Yeah, exactly. Everybody was and like, then "Oh, now the movie's out. this comedy! He's like going to take you right out of the moment." And strangely, it's the other characters that take you yeah. out of the movie, not it's him. The heart of the movie. He really he's is. The heart he's and like soul of the film. Yeah, he's like the only relatable, interesting character. In the entire film, and mm. apparently uh, Jordan Vogt Roberts has uh, gone on record saying that he would love to see uh, John C. Riley, uh, his character, spin off into his own film. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if he was that interesting to do it, but I don't think he's going to do that. I think it's just kind of an yeah. I think it was like a throwaway. Exactly. Yeah, I think it was more of like, oh, well, I'd love to see that, but man, I don't think it's like an active development or anything. But, but I mean, if I, they I could did see it, Riley being brought back though for Kong versus Godzilla though, that happens. that would be cool, and there would be more likely for them to bring him back than to bring back Hiddleston or even Larson at this point. Exactly, and well, they'd have to age him, right? Because they said what year Kong versus Godzilla takes place? Did they say? Oh, no. I don't think they said. They haven't because I yet. think we all kind of assume it's after. No, you know, once the, well, the last okay, Godzilla movie. Here's your warning. Here's your fucking spoiler warning. So turn off the goddamn podcast if you haven't seen Kong. You don't want to hear about the post credit scene because I'm going to talk about it. Five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. So the ending <laughs> of Kong Skull Island, uh, the post credit scene is Hiddleston and Larson, uh, basically captured in a room, and two other characters walk in from the film that had also survived. And they're basically part of the uh, government group that's like hunting Godzilla. And Monarch? Monarch, yes. I forget the name. Okay. So anyways, they come in and they're like start showing like slideshow video and stuff like this of like there's other monsters out there. And there's we we need your help or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then you hear the it's Godzilla. It's your kids, Marty. And then you hear the Godzilla Something's roar. Something's got to be done about your kids. And that's it. So it's very obvious that they're that that's what they're leading to. So I would suspect that the film that Godzilla would potentially take place right after this. Cause it's set up in that way. If they're going to continue with these characters in any semblance or form, um, if they're going to discard Hiddleston and Bree, then they could set it anywhere in the future that they wanted. But the way that it felt to me was that they're going to continue it. So I don't know. Chris, both did you... Godzilla and King Kong are good though. That's the thing. They're both kind of heroic in these movies. Dude, come on. Like, okay, so they have, like, this writer's room <laughs> together. 
the, the eight writers to break the Kong versus uh, Godzilla movie. Big I want to break. Monkey, let me break it for dinosaur. you now. You're going to have a couple characters that are somewhat interesting, probably not very interesting, just sideshow actors. Maybe even some A-listers that are just going to stand around and look shocked and surprised and run and jump. (laughs) And then Kong and Godzilla are going to fight for one fucking reason or another. It really doesn't matter. You'll figure it out. And then there's going to be a bigger threat that they have to team up and fight. And then they'll all go their separate Dude, ways. Do you think they're going to be dies. like extended like dialogue scenes between Kong and Godzilla that are going to be so That'd subtitled. be awesome. I just wish gonna be there Kong was. going, and then Godzilla. <laughs> oh, it would be good if, if they had subtitles. And Godzilla is voiced by Mel Gibson. Oh, and the subtitles. <laughs> the subtitles. Have we like need man subtitles. Man on fire style. Man on fire style subtitles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shut your. <laughs> Shut your. Why are we not face. in that writer's room right now? We should that be. Is you lizard the most mouth. Genius thing. Telling you, <laughs> yeah, it should be just like Anyways. long ass fucking scenes, like fifteen minutes of just like the Kong and, and Godzilla. so much money spent yeah. on CG for yes. them to have a dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, <laughs> just what uh, someone's off to the side. And he's like, "No, let them talk. <laughs> let, uh, hey, let them talk. Talking this shit out. <laughs> Calm down. Yeah, they don't break anything. They just like stop in the middle ground somewhere." Just have a little yeah, chat. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. We need to fly in some coffee. They want coffee. Just have like a fucking <laughs> Chinook helicopter flying in a giant coffee cup with coffee for both of them. <laughs> <laughs> they just want to chat over some coffee. God damn it. The Get coffee's me some too coffee. cold, so then Godzilla. And then you like, have military guys up. breaking into the back of a Starbucks and like, we need all the coffee you have. And they're like we trucks, army trucks pulling up and they're just throwing bags of fucking Sumatra in the back. <laughs> And then driving it down and putting it in this big vat on an army base and just boy, that's we got, a teaser trailer. We need to right get there. this coffee out there. That is that'd be a great teaser. And then they you show the helicopter flying out with the big ass coffee cups, like two of them. And then you get the pull back and there's like the sunset in the background and there's just the just the silhouette of Kong and Godzilla just having like a like a chat. Like one of them's got his finger on his chin. Like mm, that's very interesting what you're saying, Kong. <laughs> yeah. I think you've got a good point there. We don't we don't need to yeah. destroy New York. That's fine. And then it will cut Kong. And Godzilla over Kong. My dinner with Kong. <laughs> My dinner. Best with Kong. friends. There it is. We wrote it oh, for man. you. BFFs. Kong. Godzilla. <laughs> I work for Stu- John- And John C. Riley comes in after the title and is like, "Did they just become best friends?" <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, I love wow. it. I want to see I love that it. movie. We've I broken this so- story. I do hope that they bring John C. Riley back somehow, though, because for me, he really kind of took that movie up a notch i liked what you said on twitter though paul where you had this idea that the tom hiddleston brie larson characters should have actually been one character i didn't say was that it you who said no oh somebody else said oh no it was angie han sorry it was angie han from slash film said that yeah, but it would have and to me that made a lot of sense though because it did feel like they were both they were both too thin yeah, you they know, were, and they and there was like other. they had like uh, there was no connection there, and it was almost like, well, we're not going to go to the love been. connection route. It's like, well, that would have been something. It would have been interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, you could have had them completely at odds in the beginning. Like we, I mean, we've seen that a thousand times before, but you could have given it some kind of depth, something. Yeah. But there was nothing. It was yeah, there like was nothing oh, to it at all. The only thing yeah, we I, learned about Brie Larson is that she's I'm an anti war photographer, and the only thing we learned about Tom Middleston is like I used to work for the SAS, but not anymore. That's it. Tell me something more about them. Nobody can because you learn nothing. So this is a weird comment to make, but this is something I noticed on set because I haven't seen the movie yet. So I don't know what their relationship is at all. But I wonder if that's something they scaled back because I was watching a scene being filmed and I guess it was Kong appearing or something. And basically they were ducking down. You know, it's not very exciting scene, but they shot it about a dozen times. And sometimes they would duck down separately. And then a couple of times, like Tom Hiddleston would grab her and hold her as they duck down together. And I'm like, I wonder if they were just trying to hedge their bets, like maybe try a little romance. If it doesn't work, like take it out and let Yeah, Kong there's none in the But moment. you know what? That's, and, and I, that's like, in my opinion, I think that's really just a bad way to go. It's like commit. Commit to your story. Like what are you trying to tell? You know what I'm saying? Like this isn't choose your own adventure in the edit in an edit bay. Like that's just kind of stupid. Like you're, you're that's just a terrible way to I, build a film. Yeah, I agree. They they should have. I mean, I'm not saying they didn't, but just what I observed from them filming on set. Like, hopefully, they should have known that. Ahead Their of time. chemistry isn't that great, though. That's it's the not. Thing. It's not that great. 
you know, I mean, it's and fine. Neither of them gives a, and not, and they're both good. I like both of them and other things, but neither of them is really committing a hundred percent in this film. That's not how it no, felt like, anyway. I mean, Brie Larson, I've seen her give some great performances. This was not a great, a great dude. Brie she's Larson fucking amazing in Room. She fucking oh, earned yeah. that Oscar. You know what I'm and, saying? Like and, she's and, great. And, and also, um, uh, oh gosh, short term uh, twelve, short term twelve, yeah. short term twelve. And, yeah, then, I mean, she's and then she's Tom great. Hiddleston. You know, the Night Manager. He was fucking amazing in. You know, and and but I think he was this, just way too Tom Hiddleston in this movie. Yeah, well, they were kind of making him charming, and you know, and he's he he he. he I don't know. They 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 also could have made him more, you know, befuddled almost almost. But more he didn't. Grantish. But here's the thing. A little bit. Something. Here, here's the biggest problem. Something. Neither like, one of yeah. those characters had a conflict. No, not at all. There was nothing for them to resolve in the film. Nothing. Yeah. Tom was there, or Tom's character was there for money. Bree was there just to take mm-hmm. pictures. I guess it was like a photo. We're just gig. along for the ride. Yeah, exactly. But the neither one of them nothing. had any kind of uh, arc to resolve. There was nothing like, you know. There was no Couldn't underlying care less issue. If either of them ever came back into the series again, yeah. but John C. Riley, I'd like to see more of him, though. Yep, couldn't agree more. So, but I don't know why they had to suffer over stuff it though with so many characters. I mean, just the platoon, she Wigham's character and stuff. You know, that was enough. I found them, and you know, and they could have found John C. Riley. Maybe have Brie Larson's character fold the Tom Hiddleston character and her into one. You know, they could have maybe had that. Uh, and Tom Hiddleston felt completely extra. I think it was movie. overstuffed with characters to begin with. There was just yeah, too many. It was. There were too many, too many people, but you needed, well, I guess they needed sense. people basically for, for cannon fodder. So that's ultimately yeah. what it came down to, you know, but you know, John C. Riley was absolutely fantastic in it though. Yeah. There you go. So, you know, the best relationship in the movie was between him and, uh, and his, and his Japanese friend who's not even in the film because he's no, dead, no. but just him. Talking but you actually, about him but right. You actually feel something for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's just crazy. Him talking about their time together on the Island is the best relationship in the film. It's so crazy, so it crazy. Is. Interesting. Well, I'm really fascinated to see it. It's you know, I'm, I'm expecting to have a good time, but it like, fun definitely movie. these. It is it's totally. It is fun. a fun film. I it's bet fun. Your son it, loved it. Yeah, my my kid liked it. He didn't love it though. He he enjoyed it. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. but he wasn't like, oh my god, it was the greatest ever. He was like, you know, he liked Hacksaw Ridge better. We watched Hacksaw Ridge and he loved it. Oh wow. He's like he's he's asking me to watch Hacksaw Ridge every night now. I think like, we're not gonna wow. watch Hacksaw Ridge every night. That's just crazy. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. Well, that is it for us this week for the Joe Blow Movie Show podcast. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, yes, thank you. you. And uh, a fantastic podcast this week, guys. A great job, uh, especially to you, Chris. Just amazing. Um, and he's just speechless right now. He really is. He has nothing happiness. to say. Don't say like a word, just, Chris. Shut, just, shut your mouth. You just shut that pretty mouth of yours. But uh, to everyone listening... Um, feel free to leave us a comment either on the, the YouTube channel you're listening to or on JoeBlow.com and, or ask us questions too. We might, uh, you know, uh, answer them on the air. And of course, uh, if you'd be kind enough to leave us an iTunes review, that would be fantastic. A five star review. Five, five we're, star. Yeah. Let's... We're five star men and you're a five star listener. So four star, four star. If you have a problem with Bumbray, I can understand that, but it should be no, no less than four. If Bumbray is an issue. Which, Absolutely, and he 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 can be. He's Canadian. See, he agrees. He like he he's nodding nothing, his head right now. Nothing in to agreement. say. So there's nothing to say. <laughs> Anyways, we thank you guys for joining us. Make sure to check us out on Jobo.com for all your news, reviews, interviews, uh, and also on our YouTube channel for all your trailers, featurettes, uh, everything. We've got all your movie news needs uh, in one spot. Well, two spots: the site and YouTube. We've got all your bases covered. Again, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for your efforts. My dream movie for Jude Law would be for him to star in the long-awaited biopic of Bill Collins. He smells like cinnamon. <laughs>